Hey guys, what's up? It's Brian here, and today I just wanted to make a new video for you guys, and I know it's been a while, but I wanted to create something uh, a little different. Um, it's going to be a time-lapse video, but uh, I'm going to be doing some voiceover work. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk you guys through the process and show you what I did. Uh, today we're working on a little elf character that I ended up drawing, uh, and yeah, that's about it. So today I'm just drawing a basic character uh, portrait. When I started this drawing, I wanted to practice uh, getting better at drawing different angles. Uh, as you can tell in this drawing, I'm drawing it for more like a top-down side view. Uh, that's why her back shoulder is, you know, kind of up and behind her. And I don't normally draw this pose, so I wanted to get better at it. So let me walk you guys through my process here, and we're going to begin with the sketch. So when I work on a sketch, um, I always start with a circle, I don't know why, it's just a habit of mine. Uh, and then I do the cross um, T on the face, just to get the angle that I want. Um, and then it's just from then on, I usually will use a reference or uh, sometimes I freehand it, but usually if I really want it to look nice, I always use a reference. Don't feel ashamed about using references. People do it all the time, even in professional environments. Um, and then uh, once I got the body and head figured out, the next part was a hairstyle. And usually hairstyles, I will not reference anything, and I just kind of draw what comes to mind and freeform it. As, as well as the clothes too, sorry, as well as the clothes. Um, I didn't really have anything in mind, but then when I did the shoulders, I didn't want to cover them up, so I thought I would do like a shoulderless top or dress or whatever. Um, at this point, I kind of lowered the opacity of my previous sketch, and I'm drawing over with a cleaner sketch just to make sure I understand where I want my final lines to go. And as you can see, I'm adding in more details in the gem and everything. Anywhere that I feel like I need to have a guide of where I need more detail. Once I'm happy with the sketch, I flatten out, well I don't flatten it, I group the uh, sketch layers into a folder and then lower the overall opacity of that folder. Uh, started a new layer with my line work and just started working on that. Lately when I've been doing line work for fun and for myself, I've been using a brush called a Real G Pen. Basically what it does is it kind of adds a little bit of a texture on how a real pen would kind of bleed just a little bit into the texture of paper. So at this point, all I'm really doing is going over my sketch with my line work and adding in any details that I feel like I didn't add in with my sketch. Like for example here, I added some more hair strands that I didn't draw in my sketch just because I feel like it completed it more. Adding in more details for the sash around her shoulders. Adding in more lines to show the separation of hair strands right here. And sometimes it takes quite a few times to get it right. As you see, like, I'll draw a line and it disappears over and over. What I'm doing is literally drawing it and then undo just because I don't like that line. And I drew the hair line art on top on a separate layer 
so I could erase any overlapping lines. So at this point the lines were done and I wanted to start coloring. Uh, what I've been doing lately is creating an overall shape of the character and then doing clipping layers which basically makes it so that you have the shape of uh, the whole character as a base layer and then layers on top the color stays inside the shape of that layer. Um, I started coloring her hair green and her skin like a light peach color um, but I actually had a few different options for this character. Uh, you'll see her in just a moment. Um, I was trying to decide on what colors I liked the most, and I kind of got like a Zelda vibe from this color scheme. So as I'm doing, all I'm doing right here is uh, coloring each part on its own layer. So I have the hair on a layer, skin on a layer, the dress on a layer, and the jewelry on a layer. That way when I want to change colors layer it's easy. So I couldn't decide on a color scheme for this character. So I went to Twitter and was like, hey, which color scheme do you guys like the most? So here's what you guys had said. B. A. C. C. A. A. B. Okay, so after I ran the poll on Twitter, it looked like you guys really enjoyed the option A. Uh, so that's what we're gonna go with. Okay, so I'm gonna start my shading process. And um, all that I really do is start with a soft brush of a darker color for the, uh, the color that I'm shading on top of. And uh, what I'll do is I'll start highlighting the main areas of shadows with that softer brush. And then I'll go back over with a more solid uh, pen or brush and kind of fill in some more minor details. Uh, kind of gives a, a cool little comic book style to it where you have some soft edges but also some cell shading on top of it. Um, so right now I'm just going through the hair with the uh, uh, darker color and I take a I only do a couple different variations of uh, shading, um, and by that I mean like I'll do only a couple different color uh, uh, differences. Um, after I've done through the shading, the same thing with the highlights, I'll take a soft brush, uh, highlight the areas that I, you know, consider where the most light's going to be, and then I'll go back over with a more solid brush to really make it look really shiny and nice. And. Uh, if I ever feel like you know certain areas are too dark, I'll go back over with a lighter color. Um, the one way I shade hair is I like to do a lot of uh, passes with different colors. So you'll see here I've done three uh, different highlight passes, each one a little lighter, and it gives the hair that really nice glossy, shiny look. After I've done that, I'll go over with a soft highlight brush to make it look really glow. And that's pretty much it for the hair. Uh, again, I'll do the same thing for the skin tone. Take a soft brush and really fill in the major areas where shadow would be. After that, I'll go back through with a uh, more solid brush and clean up some of the edges. And really kind of shade in the smaller details. Sometimes I like to take a darker color and just fill in even more uh, shadows that I feel would be stronger. And then I'll go through with a soft brush and do my highlights. You have to be careful with skin tones because if you highlight too much, it can look really fake and plasticky. Especially with the hard brush, if you make it too solid, the character doesn't look very fake. <laughs> 
and not really well shaded. So one thing I like to do with skin tone is I will color the line art just a darker color of the skin because sometimes when you have black line art on skin it can make it look really uh, unnatural um, because the black lines against the skin the lighter tones of the skin can look really um, it's not a bad look but sometimes it can look a little messy um, it just depends on the drawing for me. Sometimes I leave it black and sometimes I like to color them. Depends on the look I'm going for. At this point, I'm just coloring the lips. I kind of waited to do that last. For a while I was debating on whether or not I wanted to do makeup on her, but I decided not to. Then we move on to the dress. I decided to change the tone of the lower part just so that the top the top band and the lower part are separated. Again, just filling it in with a soft brush and then filling in the details with the harder brush. Sometimes I'll even like kind of go over the hard brush with or go over the soft brush with the harder brush to kind of give it an edge but with a slight uh, gradient that comes off of it. I'm just cleaning up some of the line art. Moving on to the lower part of the dress is pretty easy. Just uh, shading in a little bit there, but since there was not a lot of detail, it went pretty quick. Lastly, I'm trying to color the jewelry. Uh, I did this all on the same layer. I didn't put the gem on a different layer than the gold. Uh, in retrospect, I should have. It would have been a lot easier to work with uh, as far as like selecting it and isolating it, so I didn't color on the gold. But what I ended up doing was just using the lasso tool to highlight the red and then isolating it that way. Gold and other metals are kind of tricky because you have to make sure you include reflections from the surrounding elements. And again, just doing the same thing with the earrings. Because metal is so reflective, what I, the way I like to shade it is I just like to do reflective lights and shadows. Um, and that was pretty much it. I just added in a background really quickly. It took me a while to decide on what kind of background I wanted. Um, I generally don't like to just have a plain, solid color background anymore. Uh, I try to move away from that, and even sometimes I will do a full illustrated background, but because this was just a quick character sketch, or not sketch, but illustration, uh, I wanted to just do something simple just to kind of break up the background. I cropped it, and that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I am going to try to continue to do more stuff like this soon and in the future. So yeah, if you enjoyed, uh, give it a like and all that cool stuff. If you really like me, follow, subscribe, whatever you call it. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.